When it comes to reading the Bible, the first rule, don't be intimidated. So many people never read the Bible because they get intimidated. If you're reading the Bible and you come across something you don't understand, just press on. Don't get bogged down. Don't be intimidated by the Bible. This is our book. It lays out a blueprint for happiness. It lays out a, a map for how to live our lives. It helps us to know the heart of God and His incredible dreams for us. And the Bible, it teaches us how to listen to the voice of God in our own lives. So where should you start? I'd like to recommend that you start with three books. Number one, the Gospel of Matthew. As we discussed in session three, read the Gospel of Matthew. This will help you to delve deeply into the life and teachings of Jesus. Number two, the book of Genesis. Read the book of Genesis. This will give you incredible insight into the human condition. It'll show you what happens when we walk with God and what happens when we turn our backs on God. And it'll help you to see that, you know what, the world is a little bit of a mess, but the gospel is the antidote. Number three, the book of Psalms. Read the book of Psalms. Better still, pray the Psalms. This is the most beautiful collection of prayers. Here in the Psalms, you're gonna find a prayer for every occasion in your life. You'll encounter every emotion in the Psalms. Joy, sorrow, hope, desperation, trust, fear, confusion, clarity, and many more. Begin by reading one chapter a day. It'll take you 28 days to work your way through Matthew. It'll take you another 50 days to work your way through Genesis. If you then pray three Psalms a day, It'll take you 50 days to make your way through the 150 Psalms. In just 128 days, you'll have a really good sense of what the Bible is all about. When you read your chapter, approach it with an open heart, listening for what God is saying to you. As you read, identify a word, a phrase, or an idea in each chapter that jumps out at you, something that taps you on the shoulder, for example, you might be reading the first chapter of Matthew's Gospel. The first 17 verses of Matthew's Gospel are the genealogy of Jesus, not the most interesting reading for a Bible rookie. But the phrase that often strikes me when I read the first chapter of Matthew is verse 23. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. There may have been times in your life when you felt like God was far away. There have almost certainly been times in your life when you have wandered far away from God. I hope there have also been some times in your life when you have felt that God was near. But here's the elemental truth. God is with us. Each day before you begin reading the Bible, pray. Just take a minute to pray. Asking God to help you to listen to what He's trying to say to you in your life right now. It could be something as simple as, Loving Father, I know you have good plans for me. Open my heart and my mind so that I can hear clearly what you are trying to say to me through the Scriptures today. The process is quite simple. One, begin with a short prayer. Two, read a chapter of the Bible. Three, pick out a word or a phrase or an idea that jumps out at you. And four, talk to God about it. Just talk to God. That's what he yearns for. He just yearns for that conversation with us. If you read the same chapter many times, you might be drawn to different phrases or ideas on different days. But even if you pick the same phrase, you might have very different conversations with God about the very same phrase. Perhaps you've picked the phrase, God is with us. You may have a conversation with God about how you sense his presence guiding you and encouraging you. But you may come back a couple of years and read the same chapter, pick out the same phrase, and have a completely different conversation with God about how He feels far from you at that moment in your life. Talk to God about the word or phrase that strikes you and listen for what He is trying to say to you through it. Just as we discussed with the prayer process, it's important that you, you don't just sit there and think about it. The point is to have a conversation with God about whatever's going on in your heart, to have a conversation with God about what that particular scripture stirs within you. Another way to get connected with the scriptures is to bring your Bible to Mass. Sure, most churches have those uh, booklets that have the readings in them, 
But there is something very powerful about holding a Bible. It's different. Try it. You'll see. This requires some advanced preparation. I like to mark the readings with post-it notes before I go to Mass. Otherwise, I'm distracted looking for the readings in my Bible during Mass, and then I miss half the readings. Next week's readings are usually published in the bulletin, or you can easily find them online. Spend some time preparing for Mass next week, and bring your Bible. You'll have a completely different experience. I also want to encourage you, bring your Bible to these classes. Throughout the rest of this program, we're going to be referring to passages from the Bible. Each time we do, find that passage, find that verse in your Bible, and mark it. Put an asterisk next to it or underline it. Don't be afraid to write in your Bible. It's yours. It's here to help you learn. It's here to help you grow spiritually. And sometimes highlighting a passage or underlining a phrase can be really helpful. This will also help you over time because you're going to be able to tell, okay, I've spent time in this parts of the Bible, but this parts of the Bible I haven't spent much time in. And you can direct some of your reading and some of your prayer towards those parts of the Bible where you haven't spent any time. The last thing I want to encourage you to do in this section is to identify some favorite passages in the Bible and memorize them. These will be a great comfort and guidance to you throughout your life. Let me share with you some of mine. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, verse 10. You see, life is busy and noisy and distracting, and that can all be overwhelming at times. Sometimes it helps just to to sit down, to be quiet, to be still, and to recognize God's presence. Another of my favorite scripture passages is in the sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, verse 33. It reads, Seek first the kingdom of God and His justice, and all else will be given to you in addition. You'll be amazed the clarity that this one line of scripture can bring to decision making. We are making hundreds of choices every day, and each choice celebrates the kingdom of God or rejects it. Happiness comes from seeking the kingdom of God and His justice. If we put that first in our decisions, so many of the other things in this world will take care of themselves. Another of my favorite passages is this. What does the Lord require of you? But that you live justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with your God. It's from Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. This is almost like a, a mini gospel. We could spend our whole lives just reflecting on this one passage and examining ourselves each day asking ourselves, am I living justly? Am I loving tenderly? Am I walking humbly with my God? Finally, I'd like to encourage you to have a favorite psalm. Read it often, but also memorize it. There'll be times in your life when you're too tired, too distracted, or too conflicted to form your own words for prayer. At these times in your life, you'll find yourself praying your psalm. My favorite psalm is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. There are hundreds of ways to invite the scriptures into our lives. I hope you'll make reading the Bible part of your daily routine. If you do, I'm absolutely confident you'll find it a life-changing habit.